What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and we are here for another episode. We're down to three realistic rebuilds in Madden 20 and today we are doing our second to last NFC team and that was the Seattle Seahawks. The last rebuild we did was horrific. The Kansas City Chiefs, worst, arguably the worst rebuild we've done all year. So this one needs to be good to get the bad taste out of our mouth. We missed the Kansas City Chiefs rebuild. Uh, it was very short. It was only one year. We ended up getting fired going into year four. I had... <laughs> A year with Patrick Mahomes because we, you know, we sim with injuries off, right? So you're playing the full. Everyone's playing. You're, you're the reason why we do that. So your team's at full strength, and we eliminate some of the randomness because you know you could burn away three, four, five years just because injuries, right? So, anyways, we did that with Patrick Mahomes. He threw 16 touchdowns in 16 games. So I was like, this is ridiculous, and we ended up getting like a three-win season after that. The the same like 80 percent of that Super Bowl roster was still there, and we lost. It was a bad rebuild. So Seattle, pretty solid team, starting with an 80 overall. Uh, I'm optimistic that this rebuild will be able to get us back on the right track, win a Super Bowl. Uh, so we have Russell Wilson at quarterback, 97, superstar X Factor, uh, incredibly valuable quarterback. I always think he is the most valuable, the single most valuable player to their team in the National Football League. Uh, hopefully, he holds on to that rating really well. Uh, I've never actually, I don't think I've ever played with Russell Wilson. So you know, when we get to hop in and actually play some staff, this is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, we're going to have Anthony Gordon as the backup. I, th I thought they actually got pretty good value in that. Um, running back, we had Chris Carson. I mean, how can you not like Chris Carson? Super, super violent runner. Uh, really interesting to watch. They get Rashad Penny back there. I mean, we could... We could... I'm going to put... I'll put I'll put Penny up on the trade block just to see what's there. But generally speaking, that's a good one-two punch. You have two strong running backs. You can get one that goes... You know, I've seen it. You know, two running backs combined. 15, 16, 1,700 yards... And 12, 13, 14, 15 touchdowns if they run the ball well enough. So I'm, I'm interested. Uh, if we can get value for Rashad Penny, we'll do so. If not, I think it will work out well in the sim. Wide receiver, three really solid guys here. We have Tyler Lockett, 87. DK Metcalf. I still don't know if I'll ever get over Philadelphia not drafting him. Uh, he was a beast for you guys last year. They got Philip Dorsett, good speed option. I kind of redeemed his career a little bit for the... He was a bust for the Colts, and then he went to New England. Was you know solid, had a role last year, and filled it well. We got David Moore here as well. Ursa, uh, they, get, they get solid options here, and definitely sky's the limit for DK Metcalf. Tight end, they got Greg Olson on a veteran deal. But other than that, man, we still definitely win. Ever that time comes for Greg Olson to hang them up. Will Disley definitely looks like a solid developmental tight end. 80 star dev, struggle with injuries, but when he's healthy, he's been pretty solid. Uh, they got Coley Parkinson as well out of Stanford. I think he'll be here for a long time. Uh, man, this is not... <laughs> it's a bad O-line. Dwayne Brown's the best line we have, and he's 35. So that's not cool. Uh, at guard, we have Upati, 74. We had Haynes and Lewis, the two youngsters. I, I probably, I'm actually going to go with Haynes and Lewis as my starters. Why not? Doesn't matter. Uh, at least maybe one of those guys can develop. Uh, we have Finney at center. Yeah, it's a bunch of junk. <laughs> not better at right tackle. And they paid this guy money, so we're going to have to start him. That is not good. Defensively, um, we got Bruce Irvin here and Alton Robinson of Syracuse. That was a solid draft pick. But we'll go with Bruce Irvin back in Seattle. Right end, we got Benson Mayoa coming over from the Raiders, I believe. Daryl Taylor, who they drafted fairly high out of Tennessee. I actually might go with Daryl Taylor starting at DN just, just to try to have someone with some upside here at this DN spot on the roster. D tackle, we have Jerron Reed, who's solid. Puna Ford. I moved LJ Collier, the very surprising first round pick. Might have a better shot at, at producing as a D tackle. I I don't know, but he's 291. He definitely can move into D tackle. So we'll see if that works out. Uh, linebacker core: We have Shaquem Griffin, Jordan Brooks, Bobby Wagner, and KJ Wright. I think for the time being, we'll go. We'll, we'll play KJ Wright because I think it's only on a one year, and then next year we'll go obviously long term with the first round pick from the 2020 draft. Jordan Brooks at a Texas Tech. Uh, as our linebacker. We'll see if we can get Shaquem Griffin, Jordan Brooks, and Bobby Wagner all to develop. But they got other good... I mean, Cody Barton, Ben burke Kirvin, all those guys are solid linebacking talents. Corner, we have Shaquille Griffin, Quentin Dunbar coming over from the Redskins, Trey Flowers, Ugo Amadi. I moved from safety to corner just because we were kind of hurting for corner depth for some reason. I don't know why they don't have a... Pretty... You know, they're hurting for corner depth in Seattle. That's just their roster. But all these guys, they're solid. Um, you know, not, not the best dev traits. Got star normal... I mean, I'm not going to lie, Quentin Dunbar after last year probably should be a star dev, but it is what it is. Uh, free safety, we got Condre Diggs, who was actually another surprising trade that, you know, Detroit seemed to be pretty upset about. 
Uh, he will be our start at free safety for now. Blair, I think, has some upside as well. And at strong safety, we have McDougal and Leno Hill. Honestly, I might do this. I think we'll go Marquise Blair. I mean, that's, the, his play style, he is a good hitter. Maybe just make him strong safety. 71, I think I'll probably go with him there. And then we could take someone like Leno Hill, who's also a strong safety. But he's only going to be depth. Won't hurt too, too much to move him back to free safety. Special teams, we have Myers and one of the best young punters in the league in Michael Dixon. So generally speaking, though, optimism is high. I'm kind of hoping that we can win a Super Bowl and get the nasty taste of that Chiefs rebuild out of our mouths. Let's get into it, man. You're one. Let's go. About the bye, we're above 500. Kind of early bye. Three and two. First place in the NFC West. All right. Not, not too displeased. Very low expectations, again, from the last rebuild. Uh, we got a Shaquille Griffin. He had two interceptions last week. I think he was player of the week. So he's a chance to go to a superstar dev, which would be phenomenal. Looking at our contracts here, I like Greg Olson for one year, but ultimately Will Disley is the guy we kind of need to commit to for the upsides 10 years. Uh, Chris Carson, I, I actually do genuinely like him as a running back. He wants five years. It's not a brutal contract. I think, I, I think we could do that. Shaquille Griffin, another one of the bright sides at corner. I'll give actually him a five-year deal. Around an $8 million cap pit. We got KJ Wright. Got to let him go. Dorsett, nah. See, now this is actually a tricky one. Puna Ford. Do we, do we re-sign Puna Ford to solid? Or do we try to... Give him like a three-year deal. Just because we have Collier, right? Move LJ Collier to D-tackle. We're clearly not going to get rid of Jaron Reed. But Ford's probably better than Collier. Maybe we just have to accept that Collier's not going to be really salvageable. And I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that because he's not a player we drafted. It's not like I have that, you know, I'm going to keep on keeping on even though it's it's clearly not going to work itself out. So we'll definitely uh, lock in Chris Carson for that five year and that will be it. Did a year one. Dude, has there been like a patch just made good teams suck? We went 8-7-1. and one. I peaked here at the stats on Russell Wilson. Garbage. Not as bad and disrespectful as the last Mahomes season. But, like, considering that last Mahomes season was the last franchise I played, and then going immediately to list makes me think there was a patch that just ruined franchise mode. The Sim. I, this, like, uh, what? These are not numbers you should see on Russell Wilson. Uh, we got Chris Carson had a fine year. Look, Carson and Penny did what I predicted. They're the only guy so far. Um, Hockey almost 900 yards. Olsen was solid. DK, 630 and 3. Not good enough. Dorsett was meh. Defensively, Bobby Wagner, beast. 112 tackles, 4 TFL, sack and a half, 6 interceptions. God damn. Uh, 6 and a half sacks, 12 TFLs for the nose. Pretty much all out run stuffing Puna Ford. Whatever, we'll take it. Beggars can't be choosers. Uh, 6 pick. Jesus. What a beast Bobby Wagner is. Um... Okay, so yearly awards. Let's just get through this because it doesn't matter for our team. Deshaun Watson is the MVP. Zeke Elliott, Will Mack, DeAndre Swift, Terrell Lewis. I don't think there's going to be any Seahawks here. Oh, okay. Actually, I will say I disagree with that. I don't think six interceptions for Bobby Wagner probably should put him at one. But again, we don't know what the other seasons were. So pretty much pissed away year one. Let's get into the offseason. Get into year two. Only Can only go up. Into free agency. Why not? I'm going to at least try it. Give Richard Sherman, you know, his, I don't know how many more years he has, but it's only one year he's looking for it. Why not? It just seems fitting to do that. It was an awkward departure. And then Trey Turner at guard. He's 28, wants a three-year deal. He's 31, should hold on to that rating fine. So that's a really good contract to give out to improve easily the worst interior line, probably worst offensive line in the National Football League. Well, we got the player we needed. Didn't get the player we wanted. Ooh, bridges burned. So with our first draft in the books, pretty happy with how it kind of played out. Uh, we got Xavier Thomas at pick 18 in the first round. D-end at a Clemson. I think he's going to be the next great D-end at a Clemson. I mean, who was the last big one? Uh, Cleveland Furl, and he's, you know, kind of kind of not. I think Xavier Thomas is a better player than Cleveland Furl. It's, let's just put it that way. Um, he's one of those guys I'm kind of surprised. Like, a lot of the draft websites don't have him higher right now. Like, this guy's a monster. This guy's a beast. What? Like a lot of people have him like, you know, maybe in the first round. Could be a second round tweener. I, I think he's going to be top 25 player when all said and done. But either way, we need edge rush help. So he's going to come in. He's a scheme fit. It made a whole lot of sense. In the second round, uh, we got Jamari Sawyer from Georgia. 72 hidden dev. There's a plug and play starter right there. 
Uh, nice, six strength, insanely powerful. Third round, we got Walker Little, the tackle out of Stanford, 68 normal. Not bad. Uh, Keith Taylor, corner from Washington, 63. A little bit of a whiff here. Didn't scout him. I just wanted to at least try to get a corner. Uh, and then the fifth round, our final pick, Jalen Phillips, the former number one recruit in all of college football, uh, transferred from UCLA, went to Miami. Maybe it works out well. 68 hidden dev, very high upside type edge that can just add into that rotation. Year two for Seattle. Um, it's a work in progress. It's still definitely a work in progress. Uh, looking at the offense in terms of changes, you know, not a lot. We got a new wide receiver three. It'll be Steven Sims. Uh, offensive line, Trey Turner coming over in free agency. Sawyer in the draft. Walker Little. So new starting right-hand side. And we got a big upgrade in guard. And usually Trey Turner is like the top guard you can get in free agency. Will Disley will have a chance now to be and emerge as our starting tight end with no more Greg Olson. But it definitely seems like him and Russell Wilson in real life, at least, had a pretty good rapport with one another. Defensively, on the D-line, we're going to Xavier Thomas, Huna Ford, Jaron Reed, and Daryl Taylor. Um, Griffin, we got Flowers and Dunbar make up our corners. Diggs and Blair at safety, pretty much exactly what we rocked with last year. Lineman core is Griffin Wagner, but now the 2020 first round pick, Jordan Brooks, gets an opportunity to take over for KJ Wright at right outside linebacker. Very, very interested to see how he performs as a starter here in year two. So we're at the bye, and it's been a pretty weird year. We started 3 0, and then well, we finished 1 4 so far, but we're tops of the division, which is pretty. Good. Silver lining, if you will. Um, contracts. What do we got? Tyler Lockett, the first one, 20. Oh, five-year deal. Ugh. Okay. Let's make smart decisions. Good business decisions. So we got Shaquem Griffin, 26, 7, 28, 29, something like that. Keep on a three-year deal, 12 million bucks. That's not bad. Dunbar, we got to move on. Dwayne Brown, got to move on. Dixon, what is a punter really worth? Give you like a five-year... Something like that. Who knows? There we go. Uh, Trey Flowers at 26.79. You know, he could go up to like a mid-low 80s. Maybe not not ever be the guy, but we could compare with something. We got Rashad Penny. Don't need two running backs. Diggs, two-year deal. You know, he's probably peaking, but I don't know if we can get his replacement. We, we, we gives us two years to get his replacement by viewing that contract. Disley, I actually want for sure five years. I think he is a fairly high ceiling. Reed only wants two years. That's fine. Uh, you know, he, he hasn't been playing that well, but two-year deal. He can do he's 29. Easy money. Now, Lockett's the tough one. Five years, 63 mil. He's already 28. So, that's going to be... What, what's his overall going to be when he's 33? I do feel like, though, because of the style, he has good speed, but he's also a pretty damn good route runner. We could just move him into the slot if his speed takes a big hit. And all these guys are, are buying in. They're buying into what we're doing here in Seattle the playoffs we're gonna get fired soon this is gonna be another super short rebuild at the pace that we're going seven and nine um i tried actually changing the playbook to tennessee people were saying move to tennessee because it's the same scheme uh maybe we got a better performance out of russell wilson it's still not great it's still not russell wilson like numbers 27 touchdowns 10 picks Running attack, uh, we got 12 touchdowns, which looks good. But other than that, the yardage is not particularly special. I guess if you combine them, you know. Uh, 9 and 11 for Tyler Lockett. DK Metcalf struggling to get off as is such in the sim. Defensively, Bobby Wagner played very well. 124 tackles, 4 TFLs, 5.5 sacks. 8 sacks, 13 TFLs with rookie Xavier Thomas. Okay. Very intrigued, interesting. Dunbar led the team with 3 interceptions. Looking at the yearly awards. You might have got Defensive Rookie of the Year. Winston for Tampa is your MVP. Way to kill the immersion. You know, as soon as you see that, you're like, oh, yeah, this is Madden, not real life. Office Player of the Year, Justin Fields, Roquan Smith. My God, the Bears are dominant. What? Thomas, third place? I don't know about that, Chief. We had nobody for the individual awards because we're two years in and we've done and accomplished absolutely nothing. Of course, we go to free agency, you know, Sherman's there. Do I try again? Let's try again. Maybe the, maybe the, maybe the bridge is burned. I'll go, I'll go one point over Buffalo, if I can, for that top bid. Uh, other than that, there's it's, you know, outside of just sinking a, a whole lot of money into Leighton Vander Esch, 
which I mean the bids aren't great on him right now, but I, that's just too much money right now. There's no upgrades, so we'll see if we can get Sherman in. And other than that, we'll keep our money and not be super tight for the salary cap next year. Hey, he's back. He wants to he wants to bring back the Legion of Boom a little bit. So for our draft recap here, wasn't a bad draft. Didn't get dev traits. The ratings look good. Uh, only one guy under the 60 threshold, uh, but I didn't get any dev traits. So as you can see, 68, 67, 68, because we had to build up our O-line. It's a good year to do so. A bunch of 70s. We got a 70 D end. And then with our number one pick, we got this guy, Shamir Babineau, number two in true talent, 78 normal dev. Not really a scheme fit, but with Dwayne Brown letting him essentially walk, we needed to pretty much get the best tackle available. He was early first round, uh, true talent. I'm looking at the players that went after him, the guys that I really remember. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, we didn't go after him. Uh, there's a 75 tackle, of course, with a hidden dev trait that we didn't get. It's only a star, but a star is still way, way, way better than a normal. Um, this guy, this was really the only, there's two. There was a D tackle, which was, Wa yeah, Wagner was, was the first guy. Clearly looked like the best D tackle in the class. But I was like, we didn't really need a D tackle. And there we go. He's a superstar dev. But I really want to see that safety. Because the safety was the only legit. Because I know we need a tackle. Hitchens was the only legit chance and, and pick we would have made over that tackle. And he is only a star dev. So generally speaking, it's not like we left a superstar X factor on the table or anything like that. We still got a really good tackle. Even though he doesn't have a dev trait, uh, you know, he still will grow and he probably, you know, high 80s, somewhere in that range, was exactly what we needed the tackle spot. So as you start year three, hopefully like a fresh brand new year with like the Titans playbook on offense will be exactly what the Docker would order. Because their offense, my God, underperforming. Uh, Lockett went up a dev trait though. He's not up to a superstar dev, so I am glad that we were to retain his services. But I just, I'm going to put DK in the slot. I need DK to go off. I need him just to feel good about this rebuild. I need DK Metcalf to go off. Uh, look at the offense. Babino, though, our first round pick, will be starting at left tackle. Immediate replacement for Dwayne Brown, which is what he was drafted for. Uh, no other real changes on the offense. Defense, uh, linebacker core, safeties look about the same. Diggs went up a dev trade. Actually, I actually think Blair went up a dev trade. I think both these guys were normals. So hopefully, they can take the game to the next level with that star dev. Obviously, Richard Sherman stands out, bringing him back, reuniting him here with Pete Carroll in Seattle, even though he is, what, 34? But still playing at a very, very high level. I feel like i got to modify that number. What was he, 23? got to fix that. Got to get back his old jersey. Uh, on the D-line, Daryl Taylor went up a dev trade. And Xavier Thomas, superstar X-Factor. He was a superstar dev out of the draft. And then he went up a dev trade Super Bowl week. I don't know if that was based upon his stats because he was third place in defensive rookie of the year. But either way... Very stacked to have that because even back to when like Seattle had Jadavion Clowney, they were not getting enough pressure after the quarterback. So maybe Xavier Thomas can be their best edge rusher since, I don't know, Michael Bennett. So optimism is high that we will not be dog shit here in year three. If not, we we might be getting fired. Very similar to the last realistic rebuild of the Kansas City Chiefs that we did. We buy here in year three, so we you know kind of early. As we get a dev trade scenario here for Jordan Brooks, potentially to get him go up to a star dev, which would be pretty cool. But a very early buy, but we're above 500, 2 and 1. I will take that honestly, given how things have gone through the first couple of years. We'll spend our that. I want to, I actually forgot to move DK into the slot, which is what we're going to do right now. I don't think so, Steven Sims. Don't need you stealing away a dev trade if something happens. Contract, we got Bobby Wags. Pretty much automatic at this point. I'm going to see if we can keep him and Sherman. Have the veterans on the defensive side of the ball. Can we give Sherman a two-year? I don't know if we'll take that. He wants more money, but we might be able to give him a two-year. We got DK Metcalf, five-year, 100%. We got to try to get this guy to go up a dev trait. And other than that, man, it's a it's a fairly light year in terms of trying to, trying to re-sign talent. I think Blair, probably, is the only other guy that will be getting himself a contract. I mean, these guys are solid depth, but, you know... I think we're okay. Probably the coolest thing to happen, best thing to happen in this rebuild. We got a dev trade scenario for DK Metcalf. Maybe I hopped in and actually played it, but still, we got a new superstar wide receiver. At the end of your three, that's oh, a respectful 10 win season. I mean, we got to run the gauntlet, but we got plus 20 morale across the board. All right. It's our first divisional title of the rebuild. Things are going up. It's at least not the Kansas City Chiefs rebuild, right? Where we're just sitting here, oh, I'm fired. And game over. 
Uh, we didn't have any dev traits really outside of DK Metcalf going up. I don't think we had any rookies with hidden devs or anything that were waiting to be unveiled. So, uh, yeah. Everything looked pretty good. Looked good. Played good. Russell Wilson, finally, fifth in yards. 32 touchdowns, nine picks. Pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns for Carson Wilson. Five and seven. He might... Yeah, with those, I mean, he might be MVP. He might be. He's definitely gonna be the MVP conversation. Uh, Thirteen. I love. Well, there we go. Putting DK Metcalf in the slot. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Lockett had a solid year. Disley had a solid year. Defensively, Wagner machine. Seven and a half sacks. Reed six and a half. But twenty-one TFLs for Xavier Thomas. That's not a bad year at all. Richard Sherman back in Seattle. Finishes with ninety-two tackles, three interceptions. Good. It's all good. It's all good in the hood, bruh. Russell Wilson is your MVP. Let's go. He's your offense player of the year as well. Uh, for the rest of the individual awards, DK Metcalf is your wide receiver of the year. Would love for him to go up to an X Factor. Wouldn't that be delightful? Um, but yeah, we finally, year three, starting to play like Seattle, which is good. And we got to run the gauntlet by taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Was that the game that the Blair Walsh shanked the field goal? Was it? I feel like that was against Seattle. I don't know. I could be wrong. Either way. We should feel confidence. Vikings suck. Come on. We got the MVP, Russell Wilson. Dangerous. We open up with a field, uh, touchdown on the opening drive. Pretty good. So, uh, second quarter. If we can get a touchdown a quarter, I'll feel happy. 21 zip. Feeling fairly good. But Minnesota able to get some points before halftime. 10 points before half. That's a little something. It's a little something. Something pretty much cuts our lead in half. But there we go. We just get a touchdown. I feel like this is our game. We're going to get a playoff victory here. And get, get this rebuild on the right foot. It only took us three years. But like the 40 bomb. Russell Wilson playing delightful. I don't know who's having the huge game right now. I assume it's Russell Wilson. But 49-27 is always going to feel good. Three touchdowns. Russell Wilson. Almost 200 rushing yards from Chris Carson as Seattle are moving on. Game three Bears are the best team in the game. So that's great. The juggernaut. They had like MVP. Justin Fields. Or whatever. Runner up in Justin Fields. They had Khalil Mack, Defensive Player of the Year, a bunch of rookie. It's They're a really good roster. So this is, uh, you know, I'm not going to be screaming at the hills if we don't find a way to win this game. They're very good. And we're, you know, we're still definitely on the come up here. I would like to see our MVP get more than seven points. You know, can we get 20? No? Okay. Russell Wilson, two touchdowns. He did get her two touchdowns at least. He was responsible for that. Big game, DK Metcalf, over 100 yards. But yeah, this is... That was just a really, really good Chicago Bears team. And we're going to available free agents. There's nothing really that's an upgrade. Um, maybe Julian Love, but it's not a big enough upgrade that I wouldn't just say, hey, that's hopefully we can get a young safety in the draft. I was thinking about a running back. I did throw a bid in here on Miles Sanders, but he still only is a normal dev. He's 26, and there's always like three to four first-round running backs in the draft. So it's just another year that... I think I can draft better than the available free agents at the positions that I kind of need. Maybe that's cocky. Hopefully it doesn't bite me in the ass. But of course the draft is like 4th, 5th, 5th, 4th. These are the first round players I have left on the board. It's an awful draft. Um, I will say there's a funny name in the draft board. You guys want to see a funny name in the draft board? You've heard of Jarvis Landry. Well, I got Javier, Javier Landry. Oh, this is, this is not good. Yeah, not a whole lot of other ways. It's kind of it was a bad draft. So we made our three picks. I simmed it out. Made our draft board. I mean, a bunch of just garbage picks by all means. But uh, we had a 68 guard in the third round. Normal dev. 71 DN. Normal dev. We got a 67 safety. Yeah, at least we made the most of our first pick. We got Trayvon Pippins continuing to solidify that O-line. He came with a hidden dev. 76 hidden dev. Number six in true talent. Getting that at pick 25. But man. Needed a running back, couldn't get one. Would have been nice to get a safety, couldn't get one. So here we are. Year four, building on. Hopefully it was a really good year three. I don't know why my why is my team not going above an 81? Could be better than that. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, on the offense. Oh, that's probably why. A little bit of regr big regression in reality to both Chris Carson and Tyler Lockett. DK Metcalf's up to a superstar X Factor, which is what I'm happy about. The O line. Is coming. That's probably one of the better better offensive lines in the NFC. And, and especially upside. Babineau, Sawyer, and Pippins all should continue to go up four, five, six plus points each. 
Um, so, yeah, offensively, I mean, it kind of stings that we weren't able to draft a running back. Considering we passed on, like, a Devin Singletary, we passed on a Miles Sanders. But, I mean, still, Chris Carson, I, I'm, I'm, I think he can do well for at least one more year. Defensively, D-line remains the same. No real dev trade. Secondary remains the same. Linebacker core remains the same. Ooh, one of the one of the little unheralded picks. Actually, the dev trade kill. Good for depth. Hmm. Two and five. Well, we didn't make the playoffs last year. I mean, we're only a game back in the division. That's the first thing that I'm noticing. Only a game back in the division. Uh, and hopefully make the playoffs last year. Kind of helped out our job security. Uh, looking at our contracts. Okay. Um, well, Russell Wilson's first. $100 million deal for sure. Pretty much going to pay him what he wants. Jaron Reed, one-year deal. Probably not going to get a better D tackle on a one-year deal. Trey Turner at guard, two-year deal. Still don't really have a guard behind him ready to take over. So we'll get him. Uh, Puna Ford, same kind of deal. I don't think there's going to be an upgrade anywhere to be had over the next two years. Daryl Taylor. What has his stats been looking like? Yeah. Those aren't bad numbers. I mean, what what is his upside reality though? 25 set. Hey, it's not bad. This this is this could be a bad contract. Oh, he wants more money. That's that's right on the wall. I'll try to get Jordan Brooks back though. Keep our 2020 first round pick. Other than that, these guys... Yeah, I think I'm going to let Daryl Taylor walk and we'll obviously make sure we can lock up Russell Wilson for the next three years. Not interested, huh? Let me introduce you to the franchise tag, brother. I'm not nauseous. Just wait till you see the record. Oh, Madden. Ah. Yep. Six win playoff team. What? How did this? Oh, we beat Arizona. Rams. Rams. For, I mean, hey, we, we played, I guess, good enough within our own division. Oh, my God. Oh. It's like a pit in my side. It's disgusting. Um, so this could be the other win the Super Bowl, right? Here in year four. Six, nine, and one is your Seattle team. That's a divisional title of counts. It's ugly. Helps our job security. Second divisional title of the rebuild. Statistically... Uh, Russell Wilson is, why is he playing so bad? Like literally Ryan Tannehill in the same offense, the same playbook. Gets like 40 touchdowns, but Russell Wilson can barely get over 20. Um, he was the MVP last year. He was the MVP last year. Ursa had a... I mean, I didn't mess with the playbook. Uh, Metcalf wasn't in the slot. Probably should have done that. I mean, he was already an X-Factor. Uh, Jordan Brooks had a great year, though. I'll give full credit where credit is due. Outstanding season. 132 tackles, 7 TFLs, 7 sacks, and a pick. The rest of the sacks were not good. Interceptions were fine. Yearly awards MVP went to Dak Prescott. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of Seahawks. None. Absolutely, this is garbage. Absolute garbage of a rebuild. Hey, at least we made the playoffs. Let's 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 try to win the Super Bowl. We're six nine and one. We should be the most dangerous team in this whole playoff run. All right, see, oh my! I can't, every time I say it, it's just like I don't want. Like, why is this what I do for a living? Anyways, we're six nine and we're a miracle team. I remember there was a year that didn't Seattle have a record actually kind of similar to that? Made the play like a seven win. Was it didn't a seven win Seattle team win the division like ten years ago? But we're getting rightfully smoked. I absolutely want to lose forty nothing because we should not be in the playoffs. Nine, uh, but there we go. A year removed for winning MVP. Russell Wilson can't amount to a touchdown in the playoff game. And we got smoked by Daniel Jones. Year five. All right, so for free agency, uh, we got Julian Blackman here. I was so upset that I just simmed, forgot to franchise tag Russell Wilson. So, uh, hopefully we can get him back. I'll give him, I can't, I literally can only give him max. That is the most I could give him. Maybe give him three years. Will that make him happier? Doesn't matter. We're stuck at 102. I can't give him any more money. And then Julian Blackman actually was a really nice upgrade of free safety. So let's see if we can get Russell Wilson back. If not, oh my god, this rebuild is ruined almost. Fuck off. 
Okay, so try to replace Russell Wilson. I mean, we had to get him sooner. I might have, we're probably cutting his career in Seattle a year or two short, but we needed his successor. I'd, I had a solid draft. I made my first three picks, simmed out the rest. We actually get a nice 69 fullback, which is kind of good. Uh, but we got in the third round here, Geo Godfrey, middle linebacker, Southern Miss. 68 hidden dev, pass coverage. So it's exactly the style of linebacker we want. Here's our quarterback, Warren Gallagher, 72 hidden dev out of Georgia. He is a scheme fit, improviser, uh, good athlete, kind of like, you know, built stylistically to Russell Wilson. You know, he's our guy. He's our guy at least this year, for sure. And then in the first round, we got Julius Ramsey, running back from Kansas, 75 hidden dev. I think he was number five in true talent, which I feel kind of comfortable about. 233 pounds, almost an elusive back, uh, which is good. He's just a very well-rounded player. Doesn't have the great straight line speed, but... I'm not overly worried about that. Solid draft when we absolutely needed a solid draft. So here we are for year five. Uh, it was always going to be tough to be better than we were last year, especially losing Russell Wilson. Uh, but, we, you know, the future could be bright. Between Gallagher and Ramsey, give me some dev traits. We'll be, we'll be looking pretty. Uh, Metcalf's a beast. Lockett's still holding on here a little bit. O-line is, is fine, generally speaking. Um, yeah, I'm happy with the offensive line. Defensively, Sherman retired. So we need Griffin to step up. We need Thomas to step up. We need him to be a sack machine. Brooks went up a dev trait, which is pretty good. Uh, Wagner's still doing his thing, even though he is slowly regressing. We brought in Blackman in free agency to play at free safety. He makes a solid safety, you know, high 70s, both star devs. Not bad. I've seen a lot worse. But you can just tell, like, this looks like a team that we're just starting a rebuild with versus being in reality, we're in year five. But I think we've done enough making the playoffs two of the last three years for job security. That we at least should survive this year. But I don't know for expectations. You know, we usually get year five, year five, Super Bowl or bust kind of scenarios for the old style of rebuilds. Don't think that's necessarily going to be the case now. I literally just, like, I simmed to the midseason and started spreading the points. And there's an X factor. I don't know. what is that Bazooka? That doesn't make sense why he had Bazooka because he only has 87 throw power. It's run and gun. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Many passers use a combination of mobility and aggressiveness to make big plays. When they enter the zone, they can't be intercepted while throwing on the run. This guy, okay, I can now say conclusively that when you draft a player, their true talent grade has nothing to do with their dev trade. Because this guy here was like in the 20s in true talent. Like I thought for sure he was going to be a star dev. Let alone, let's see what Ramsey is. Does he have his dev trait? Unlock the power back, our new running back, starting RB1. Maybe it could be superstar. There's a chance it's superstar. It's probably star. I don't care. We got the X Factor at quarterback. I'm happy. Oh, he still hasn't even locked his dev trade yet. But he's kind of developing a little slower. Feels like it could be a star. But we're three and four. All right. I mean, we are last place, but we're only two games back from the lead. I've seen worse. I've felt worse. Contracts. Uh, we actually have a decent amount of money. We don't have any massive contracts really on the books. So we could sign whoever, whenever we want. Um, and and by that, I mean we're straight up signing one guard. So as year five comes to it, I mean, you pretty much can see the right on the wall. This was you know, a little bit of a rebuild year, especially losing Russell Wilson. Six and ten. I mean, hey, we made the playoffs last year with six wins. We're still employed. So that's good. Uh, Gallagher, what? Oh! What? We got two superstar X Factors. Ramsey with wrecking. How did he, was he developing so slowly then? Developing the faster? I don't think so. He only went up like four points. Gallagher went up eight, and the running back went up from, he was 75, I think. So maybe he just didn't run the ball good enough. That is, all right. That might be my best draft ever. Two X Factors back to back, first and second round. I don't think I've ever done that. All right, feeling good. Feeling good about that. Feeling good about the part two of the rebuild. Looking at the stats here this year. Uh, Gallagher, third in yards. Twelve. I mean, I'll take that for a rookie. 40, almost 4,400 yards, 30 touchdowns. Uh, Ramsey, you know, eh. That's, that's a boat on pace to like what Chris Carson was giving us consistently. Lockett, nice year in the slot. 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. Almost 1,006 for DK. Disley had a nice year. Seven touchdowns for Javier Landry. Bobby Wagner back up on the tackle tip. 115, eight TFLs, three interceptions. We got seven and a half sacks from Richmond. Definitely don't like seeing that from Xavier Thomas. Considering he picked up his fifth year option, he's going to be very expensive. Three picks by, oh my God. Not one corner had a pick. 
That makes you feel good about your secondary. Justin Fields is the MVP. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year went to Fields. Gallagher coming in at 8. He's your Offensive Rookie of the Year, number 1 and 2 for our two little X-Factors. All right. I, I mean... We had a six nine and one playoff, which is which is never never ideal, but we're sitting here through five years, two divisional titles. We still have a job, and we just drafted two superstar X factors. So I think when we come back for part two on Saturday, I mean I'm optimistic that we're gonna be able to seal the deal, get a Super Bowl in year two, uh, or part two. So I hope you guys did enjoy this, and uh, a little bit of weirdness going on with Russell Wilson, a lot of weirdness going on in this read. But I don't know, literally it feels like there was a patch just to make franchise suck. That uh, dropped over the last week. Because, <laughs> you know, just from the Chiefs rebuild, uh, without giving... Sp eh, no, it wouldn't be spoilers. Without giving spoilers, the, the Eagles thing was just ridiculous. A record, win-loss record in the pink slips. Where, like, at week 10, everyone had three wins. Like, it's just something was going on. I don't know. My Madden's bugged. I don't know. That's conspiracy. That's tinfoil hat theory stuff. But either way, uh, we still got part two for Seattle. And I'm, I'm excited to see what we could do with Gallagher and Ramsey, our two superstars, trying to be the next, you know, Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch. But that is it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. I'll see you back here tomorrow for episode 51 of Flashback Pinks. Peace out.